Lindsay and Robert Shiver seem to be living a fairy tale life together. At Auburn, he was a football star and she was a cheerleader and pageant queen. They got married, started a family and had three wonderful boys. They lived in a sprawling mansion in Thomasville, Georgia and flew a private jet to their vacation home in the Bahamas. Life was good. Then Robert allegedly caught Lindsay having an affair with a bartender from Grabber's Bar in the Bahamas. He filed for divorce. She filed for divorce. But they continued to live together, and 911 calls were made to the police. Then on July 16th, she allegedly sent a message with her boyfriend to another man to have Robert killed. She's out on bond in the Bahamas, and tonight we examine the relationship, the breakup, and the blow-ups as we listen to 911 calls and take a look at the body cam video when police arrive as we try to figure out what went wrong in paradise. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And it's, it's sad. It's absolutely sad when families break up, but we know it happens. But sometimes things are just escalated to the next level. And that's what happened here. That's why we're covering it. That's why it's a criminal case. And it all really started with that Bahama drama. And, and you think about this, you've got um, Robert and Lindsay Shiver and their boys and the families, they go down to the Bahamas. This is where they go for family vacations. They got a place down there. They take the private jet down there. And it's a place to, you know, family time, right? This is, this is like you get away from the hustle and bustle of every day so you can spend more time with each other. And that didn't happen here. It just didn't happen here. And it ended up that she allegedly hooked up with a bartender who then hired or attempted to hire this man right here, where is he, right, right, right there he is, oh, oh, there he is, to murder Robert. Insanity, insanity, a, a family vacation, a getaway, turns into an affair, turns into an alleged murder for hire plot. So Robert and Lindsay were, were splitting up Right? That, that's clear. Um, the, the split up came once the, the, you knew about the affair. He filed for divorce, she filed for divorce, but things are complicated. Things get complicated when you uh, have been together for a while and you start a family and you've got a lot of money, right? Everything gets more complicated the more you have. The more children, the more money, the more complicated this split became. But during the course of them breaking apart, and each filing for divorce, they were still living together in that house. And I mean, it's a big house, I get it. It's, it's a huge house. And you're not gonna be necessarily on top of each other inside that house, but it's the same house. And one of you is allegedly having an affair, both of you have filed for divorce, messy tension, blow-ups, awkward situations, all of that was happening. As a matter of fact, we've counted up uh, to this point like six 911 calls. And I'm sure before any of this ever happened, um, when they were just a regular family with kids and money and doing things, and you're not calling 911. But now you go, six 911 calls? Things are off the rails in their lives. So. Tonight, we're gonna to go through some of those 911 calls and, and sort of do it all in chronological order. But you really need to understand the context of what's happening in the relationship at the time of each of these calls. Because there are certain things that are happening at certain times that completely change the picture and may change the way you see or hear these calls and these body cam videos of the responding officers. So. Let's first go through the timeline of events. On February 18th, Lindsay Shiver went away for a weekend trip without her family. On February 20th, Robert called 911, afraid Lindsay was setting him up. The last week of March, Lindsay, Robert, and the kids go to the Bahamas for spring break. 
On April 5th, Robert files for divorce. On April 6th, Lindsay files for divorce. On April 12th, Robert calls 911 about a strange package. On April 30th, Robert, his mother, and Lindsay call 911 during a custody exchange. On July 16th, Lindsay calls 911 because Robert won't let her on their private jet. On July 16th, Lindsay allegedly sends the kill him message to the hitman. On July 21st, Lindsay is arrested. It's the full timeline. We're going to go through it piece by piece. Let me bring in my guests, our experts tonight. Joining me in Los Angeles, California, body language expert Rob Best. And in Orlando, Florida, jury consultant, human behavior expert Susan Constantine. Also joining us in New York City, nationally known psychotherapist, host of Talking Live and the Bite Sides uh, podcast, Dr. Robbie Ludwig, and in Los Angeles, California, clinical and forensic neuropsychologist and associate professor at Pepperdine University, Dr. Judy Ho. The experts are here. Uh, just a quick question, and I'll begin with you, Dr. Robbie. Um, they're both, they're in Splitsville, yet they're still living in that house. <clears throat> How bad of an idea is that, or do you think that's kind of normal for people to do? Well, it's not uncommon, and I think um, there are two reasons. One, financial. Uh, you know, financially, you know, there isn't the money that they want to spend in two different locations. And also, due to custody and the kids, and the laws are different in each state. But no parent wants to abandon their child or to look like they're abandoning their child. And what can happen is you have two people that don't problem solve together that are extremely enraged and they live in the same house. And it's very contentious and potentially dangerous. Okay, so let's jump into the timeline now. So, um, again, this is all this year. February 18th, Lindsay goes away for a weekend trip. And this is not with the family. She just goes away for a weekend trip. And then on the 20th, Robert calls 911 and reporting that Lindsay had cut off his cell phone. Um, let's take a listen to that. So uh, my wife just got back from out of town and I uh, believe that we are heading down the road of getting divorced. She just cut my cell phone off um, from Verizon. She called Verizon and had my cell phone disconnected. So I'm calling on my mother's phone at the Verizon store because the only way I can get it back active is if she releases it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to go over to uh, our home. And with the way that she is behaving, I feel like she might try and call the police to try to set me up as soon as I get there. And I wanted to try to get out in front of it because I'm not a, a risk of, you know, doing anything crazy. I'm just trying to go to my house and if I need to pack my stuff and leave, I can pack my stuff and leave. Um, but my kids are there and, you know, I don't want it to be presented as she goes and screams bloody murder, calls the police over nothing to try to have me uh, carried off in a police car. All right, uh, Susan Constantine, I'll begin with you. What do you what do you hear in his voice in making this call? I mean, to me, it sounds relatively calm, but it, it to me, it's clear there's there's problems in this marriage. He's even saying that. But what are you hearing uh, from Robert Shiver in that call? His voice is very calm, but the thing that I'm it's not even so much that his tonality. Um, that I'm hearing. It's just that he's trying to set up documentation, to, you know, beginning that process of when he is at the home, he wants to make sure that the officers are there so that something doesn't escalate and they can document that there's no, there's not going to be any sort of confrontation between the two of them. So when I hear that, I am hearing him say, you need to come to my house, something could happen, and I want you to document this for later on, and also in case things become more escalated. Dr. Judy Ho, this is again, this is February 20th. No one has, no one files for divorce until April. <clears throat> but it seems clear in his mind that they're heading down this road and she's cutting off his phone? 
Vinny, it's so interesting because on the one hand, you listen to this call and without context, you might actually even think this is somebody who sounds maybe overly suspicious or even a bit paranoid about this person who might become his ex-wife soon. But now that we have all of this other information, it appears that there were signs that he was already fearful of as early back as February. And even though he did sound calm in the call, the way that he was speaking and how measured he was speaking and all the delays and pauses, I think he was still trying to formulate the thoughts in his head of, how do I explain this to this 911 dispatcher in a way that doesn't make me sound like I'm losing my mind, but something is off and I can't even quite put words to it myself at this point. But that's what we sometimes call intuition, that there's something just doesn't feel right and he feels like he needs to do this. But maybe even at that point, he didn't really know how bad it was going to get. Okay, let's move ahead in our timeline. Um, first week of April, the Shiver family goes to the Bahamas for spring break as, as a family. So this is the end of March, beginning of April. And then when they come back from the family vacation in the Bahamas... He files for divorce. <clears throat> now, remember, the Bahamas are, are where she's allegedly having this affair with the Bahamian bartender at Grabber's Bar. Next day, she turns around. She files for divorce. Um, then one week later, Robert calls 911 to report a strange USB drive that was delivered to his office and to his parents' home. Let's listen to that. I'm just getting 911. Listen, I do not have an emergency right now, um, but I was wanting to just kind of put you guys on notice of something that has is, is been kind of odd. Mm -hmm. Are you the right person to talk to, or do I need to be transferred to a dispatch, or what? This is dispatch. Okay, so the day at work, um, I had a letter delivered to me, and it was a USB thumb drive. And it didn't have a return to sender address or anything, and so I plugged the thumb drive in, and it had all these pictures of my wife on it from about two weeks ago when we were out of the country. <laughs> and the same thumb drive was delivered to my parents' house uh, about a mile away in an unmarked envelope. And it looks like, glancing through, that it was almost like a, a private investigator. But we have spoken with everybody that uh, we know, mm -hmm. and they've all confirmed that they they don't know what we're talking about. Okay. So I don't know if we have, like, a potential stalker or, uh, you know, some some lunatic that's in town that has been following my wife around. Okay. But we just wanted to let you guys know it, it might do, or we would like it if you guys could maybe, you know, just make a couple of uh, passes by our home tonight. We just kind of went through and checked the whole house ourselves. So again, uh, Rob Best, putting this in perspective in the timeline, right? He's filed for divorce already. It's a week later, gets this strange USB with these pictures of his wife from the Bahamas from their spring break trip. How does he sound to you? Yeah, you know, there's so many questions regarding the situation. Focusing on the 911 calls, both of them really, he's super congruent. There's nothing about his words, his tone, or the volume that provide a significant tell for questioning Robert. You know, when, when we lie, or when we attempt to manipulate, we are attempting to convince people of something as opposed to conveying information. Robert is conveying information. Everything about his communication, these calls seems very congruent. And while I have questions about the situation, I don't necessarily question Robert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Judy Ho, this is, this is a bizarre little factoid here, right? And, and he's getting the US, but he refers to her as his wife, doesn't mention anything about they both have filed divorce, and he's thinking they've got a stalker? 
Yeah, this is really perplexing because clearly he also did at one point enlist the help of private investigators to tail the wife. And that is how he discovered that she was having the affair with the man in the Bahamas. And now he's acting like the idea of hiring a private investigator is such a novel concept. So I do think that that part of it is really odd and even aligning himself with his wife, as you were pointing out, they have already filed for divorce, but now he's saying my wife. And that is different from the earlier call that you played Vinny, where he said months before actually they filed, this is heading towards divorce, right? And so later on, he's basically saying, this is my ally, this is my family, this is my wife. So it's really, really hard to understand what he was trying to accomplish in this call and if it was completely and truly innocent. Yeah, Susan Constantly, you look like you wanna jump in here, go ahead. Yes, again, documentation, I keep going right back to that. And he says, I wanna put you on notice, right? He says, this is all a setup. He's telling you what he found, where he found it, what he thinks it is. He's even speculating what it is from a private investigator. And to your point that you mentioned this last most beautiful uh, gal here, um, she was talking about the fact that, you know, that there was kind of this alignment, right, with this investigator than there was investigation before. You know, I mean, he may have recognized something that he had already done. And, and frankly, none of us have enough information to really make a diagnosis of what's going on here. There's a lot of missing pieces going on, but certainly it is quite intriguing. But I think it's still like his documentation, setting up, setting up a scene, and there's a reason why he's doing that. Could be fear, could be concern, but it actually could be real. Uh, this is what's really happening. All right, our guests are staying with us. We've got a lot more to go through. We've got, uh, we're gonna take you to April 30th when three separate 911 calls are made plus coming up next hour in the low country of south carolina a former teacher of the year and her boyfriend accused of purposely leaving her special needs teenager in a hot car to die while they had sex inside the house all the evidence is in and the arguments have been made and it's time to hear from the jury we the jury and the above caption on the charge of murder of Christina Ann Pagalani by the defendant. A tragedy in the Hollywood Hills. Prominent therapist Dr. Amy Hardwick found fatally injured under her balcony. Her ex-boyfriend on trial for her murder. She had had a restraining order against him. He strangled her, lifted her up over the balcony and dropped her. He never intended on killing her. Is this a case of a jilted lover turned obsessive stalker? The Hollywood Obsession Murder Trial. Coverage continues Tuesday at 8, 7 central on Court TV. Okay, now on. Hey, this is Lindsay Shiver. I'm in the middle. I just got off the phone with my um, divorce attorney. I'm in the middle of a divorce right now, and my kids are being withheld from me. So I was just, they're going to my mother-in-law's house who has zero rights. So I was hoping that I could have assistance at her house when I pull up to get my kids. So there's Lindsay Shiver. Now things are getting, you know, a little more tense, right? Now we're talking about the custody of the kids. Where are they going to be? They're in the middle of the divorce. Um, here's where we are in the, time, in the timeline. Take a look. Uh, April 29th, um, Robert takes the couple's children to visit Lindsay's family, but Lindsay does not go with them. So it's Robert and the kids going to see Lindsay's parents. The next day, when Robert and the kids return to Thomasville, Georgia, Lindsay, as you heard there, calls 911 saying her children are being withheld from her. Robert's mother, Robin, calls 911 saying Lindsay is following her car and is concerned because she's armed. Robert calls 911 and explains the children are with him and claims Lindsay is unstable. So we've kind of set that up for you. So you're gonna hear Lindsay first, then Robert's mother, then Robert. Let's take a listen. What's your name again? Lindsay Shiver. 
and the kids have been gone all weekend, and my husband just texted me that that was the new plan. And, of course, I won't answer the phone. So who has custody of them? We both do. We haven't gotten that far to a hearing or anything. They've been gone out of town all weekend, and we're in Wigan minutes ago heading to the house, and then I get the message that now his mother's going to have them, and I'm not okay with that. So what are y'all trying to do? Custody? 46 Thomas, I'm relocating to the compliance location at the West. In the divorce. Divorce. I just had my kids with my family all weekend, and I respected that. I didn't go up there with my family. On the way back this morning, they were in Wigham 20, 30 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. 23 they were headed home, and then I get the message Good that morning. they're dropping, he's dropping them with his parents, who have no right. What's the problem there? Um, we've got a daughter-in-law who's going through a divorce, and she's following me right now, and I know she does have a, uh, she does have a pistol possibly in her car, and she is threatening that we will not get to see her kids because my son is on his way back from having been out of town with the kids. Okay, is your and call at that location right now? She's on my tail following me right now. And what is her name, ma'am? Lindsay Shiver. S-E-Y? S-A-Y. What kind of vehicle not, is she in? She's, she's not well. It's a um, Escalade. It's a black Escalade with black windows, and we're on Pine Tree Boulevard passing the college right now. And her mother told me to call y'all because they've talked to her, and they said she is really crazy. She's not well, and she's on I don't know what kind of drugs. How old is she, ma'am? She's 35. She's delusional, and you know that. And her mom and husband, myself, we're all like, you've got to go get some help. You've got to go get some help. You're mental. Mental. And she denies it. And then she she left the kids this week and went down to the Bahamas. She could have gotten hold of some drugs down there that everybody thinks she's definitely on, but we can't prove it unless we get a hair sample. So if we could get a hair sample and y'all send it off, or if she could get checked out by a doctor right now, they might can find out more that she's been doing these last four days in the Bahamas by herself. My wife and I are going through a divorce, and I've been gone all weekend, and she just uh, threatened myself and my mother to bring the kids back, and her mom is saying to take her to the ER or check her into some mental uh, some institution because they think she's having kind of a midlife crisis mental breakdown, so it's super unstable, and uh, she just followed my parents when they left the house trying to find the kids, and deputies were called, but since we live in the city, they said we need to call Thomasville City instead of the county. Okay. Did your parents have the children with them? No. The kids are with me. <clears throat> okay. Hey, what's the wife's name? Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. Mm -hmm. Diver's last name, S-H-I-V as in Victor, E-R. What's your name? Robert. And you said you made contact with the deputies who told you to call TV? No. When she was following my parents and sister, mm -hmm. they called the police because she was following them. Mm -hmm. And they they stopped her, but they said there wasn't really anything that they could do. Um, and then so now my parents are uh, at a friend's house. And it looks like I've got a tracker on my wife's car. It looks like she's at Publix. And then um, uh, we were coming back in from being with her family. Me and the boys were uh, from this weekend. And she just, like, went off the handle. And so I'm trying to buy some time and not take my kids into an unstable environment, number one. And mm -hmm. she's going off the rails without seeing the kids. So I'm just trying to figure out how to approach this because I, I don't want the boys to see the mom, like, get, you know, carted off in a police car if she starts showing out or kind of what, what the best course of action is to handle this. All right, let's bring back in our experts, Rob Best, Susan Constantine, Dr. Robbie Ludwig, Dr. Judy Ho. Uh, Dr. Robbie Ludwig, I'll let you go first. Um, what's, this is a mess. 
Yeah, this is a mess. But when you listen to Robert, he sounds much more sane and stable. The fact that, and Lindsay seems a lot more dysregulated, the fact that her parents are not siding with her is very concerning. Uh, and it means that they must know something about her mental well-being and stability that uh, encourages them to side and support her soon-to-be ex. And, you know, the fact that her mother-in-law is concerned she may have a gun. So it's painting a very different picture. It's, it's, it's very um, striking that Lindsay's own mother doesn't appear to be supporting her. And so I think that's something to look further into. All right, Rob Best, um, what did you see, what did you hear in all of these calls and, and body cams? Yeah, you know, Robert remains consistent. There, there's no red flags or tells for us to focus on here. He's conveying information. The video with Lindsay, however, is what's so intriguing to me. It, she's, she's incredibly confident, yet when we look at some of the details, I agree with Robbie, she's very dysregulated. Um, you, you see open body language, open palms and hands, things that'll tell you she's telling the truth. Yet when people who are in high positions of power, they feel like they're highly empowered. It's much easier for them to regulate certain behaviors as they might be lying or manipulating. They have a complete opposite physiological reaction to us when they're lying or manipulating. Their focus is on the reward, not on the risk. Their cognitive levels increase, their cortisol and stress goes way down. Their ability to be super refined is really, really high in these moments. And in addition, this is supposedly about her kids and her concern for her kids. And I'm not hearing many comments about Mama Bear being concerned for the kids in this moment. I hear a lot of convincing for her to get whatever it is that she believes she wants. Dr. Judy Ho. Well, Vinny, I think what is really telling is when her husband's mom says, I'm calling you at the instruction of Lindsay's parents. They think that there's something going on here and they're instructing me to contact law enforcement. With all of the context that we have, the parents are saying to do this, knowing that there's risk that Lindsay could get in trouble with the police. If she was on drugs, for example, this could lead to an arrest or some other major consequence. And yet they still felt like it was important enough to inform the police about her behaviors. I also think that it's really interesting that as you're looking at her behaviors in this video, that so much of what is being said is more about the power dynamic between her and her husband rather than the children. It's really about, well, he took them up to my family's house to spend time with them. And I gave them that respect, right? So much of that is really about the exchange and what she thinks the power dynamic should be, as opposed to I'm concerned about my children's well-being or I really miss them, right? So this was a lot of what was just discussed right now. And I think that it shows where her mind really is. It's more about a self-focus, it seems, in this moment that is very pivotal rather than what is the good of my family and how do I act for the greater good of my children? Susan Constantine, what did you see? What did you hear? Yeah, so I'm gonna kind of go a little bit off to another area and it's like, I don't understand why the cops are even called because this is a civil matter. This is not a criminal matter to begin with. There's no parenting supplemental agreement. There's no court order. Both parents have equal rights to their children. There is no one that has any more power over the other one. The fact that we got a grandmother who's very concerned, I get it, in these high contiguous types of relationships, you're gonna see this bantering going back and forth, especially when you've got high stakes. So what I'm seeing is a lot of, lot of talk and a lot of jibber jabber, and quite frankly, the cops are not their parenting coordinators, okay? So I think this should be taken in, uh, taken up with their attorneys. And, and this is what they keep doing. Everybody's pointing fingers at everybody else, which will drive everybody insane. So now, if you're wondering why she's crazy, and I'm not defending her, you can see why. Yeah, and you can see why I didn't go, to, go into family law as well. <laughs> all right, all our guests are going to stay with us.
Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about a crucial, crucial day. It's July 16th. We've got some body camera video. There's 911 calls made, obviously. But something else happens that day that could be the key to the criminal case against Lindsay. I was awakened by my brother it screaming. Was pounding on the door. Bang, bang, bang. People don't realize human beings like that can exist in the world. He said that we'd seen his face and there was no way that he could ever let us go. They were not gonna let me go easily. You better fight and you better get out of here. I survived because I'm a born fighter. I survived tonight at 10, 9 central on Court TV. Woke up this morning, we have travel plans to leave. Mm -hmm. And he's insisting that I don't go. Okay. And then I have my keys. He starts, moves me out of the way, starts trying to unload my car. Tells me he owns the car. He owns the rights to it. Just okay. got super aggressive, and that's when I called immediately because he's been physical before, and I'm just not okay. Not so, doing that. So All right. Let's get back into our timeline. That's Lindsay Shiver. Um, July 16th, crucial, crucial day. Lindsay calls 911 about this dispute. They're in Thomasville, Georgia at the time. Uh, travel plans to the Bahamas. He's going away with the boys. She's going to go see her boyfriend. Now, it is this same day after this call, and, and you'll see more about it, that Lindsay allegedly, according to Bahamian authorities, sends the kill him message in that WhatsApp uh, conversation to the alleged hitman that they were soliciting, who's a music producer uh, down in the Bahamas. Uh, five days later, Lindsay gets arrested in the Bahamas. So this day, July 16th, this is the day when the alleged um, message is sent to put a hit on her husband. So let's take a look at some of the, some more of the body cam video from that day. I uh, hear the officer is speaking with Robert. I, I believe you'll see Lindsay in the background. So for the last three weeks, maybe longer, she's had her couple's trip planned with her boyfriend to go to Key West. Okay, but she just said you're going. I, so that was to Key West. I'm taking my kids, my three boys, to the Bahamas. This is our kids. Our kids. Yesterday, she sent a message saying that she's going to change her plans and now get on the airplane with me and the kids to go to the Bahamas. But I own too, and by when the we way. land, she's going to go to her boyfriend. Elsewhere. And me and the kids are going to her house. And I told her I'm not supporting that. And you're not getting on the airplane. That can mess with the kids' heads. And it's just something we're not going to do. Okay, remember, this is the day that I, apparently at some point later in this day, she sends that kill him message to put a hit out on Robert. That's what she's in trouble for down in the Bahamas. Those are the allegations. Let's bring back in our guests, Rob Best, Susan Constantine, Dr. Robbie Ludwig, Dr. Judy Ho. Dr. Judy Ho, I'll start with you on this one. Um, this, is, this is the crucial, crucial day. Right. And as you can see here, there's no way in my mind that two intelligent Cognizant adults wouldn't know that this would be such a recipe for disaster. So again, the story is that Lindsay is the one who is pushing to get on the plane in plain sight of her children and her soon to be ex-husband, basically in a situation where they're completely enclosed, no one can escape and bringing in this tornado, this bomb essentially of a Paramour, who was the one discovered to be uh, involved with her before they even filed for divorce, right? So this is obviously something that was going to escalate in one way or another. And if she really was the one pushing for this, it appears that she perhaps wanted this to be a big conflict and to be a big dramatic setting rather than again, as we were just saying in this last segment, is she really thinking about 
her kids, what they might be feeling in this scenario and pushing to get on this plane instead of finding some other way to get to the Bahamas. Susan Constantine, your thoughts? Yeah, when I watch, I like to watch their body language too. And, and watching the dynamics between the two of them, there's a lot of distance between them. But when we look at Lindsay, right? She's got one foot on the step. She's got one foot on the ground. She's got her hand on her hip and she's very agitated and annoyed. We look at uh, we look at her husband, he's very relaxed, right? I mean, he doesn't look like he's got a care in the world. He's still very modulated in his voice, voice tone, inflection, all that kind of stuff. So there's not a high conflict, but there certainly is a big power struggle going on, especially we keep seeing this calling on each other. Then we've got the petition and then we got the counter petition. So the two of them are in a power struggle and you can see that that's what's going on in this case. Dr. Robbie Ludwig, this was the day. This is the day she allegedly sends the kill him message. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we can see that Lindsay is very angry with her husband and she appears to be a blamer. So we can see that she's very miserable. Perhaps she's blaming um, disappointments that she has about her life and, and blaming her husband for all of these problems. And I think what we're seeing is she doesn't seem to have an observing ego to look at herself, to look at the ways in which she may be provoking her husband right now or creating her own misery or her own self-destruction. So we see a, a little bit of it in this video. If she did send a kill him message and she wasn't joking, um, again, kind of this idea of I can outsource people to do my dirty work and then uh, my issues will be resolved. It's this faulty thinking that happens a lot with intimate partner homicides. I kill my husband or I kill my wife and my problems are gone. And as we know, it never works like that. No, we, we see the trials on Court TV. <laughs> Rob Best. Uh, it works out for us, yeah. but not for them. Not for them. <laughs> Uh, Rob, what did you see in this exchange? Because again, this is the day where the investigators down in the Bahamas say this WhatsApp message was sent. Yeah, it's interesting, Vinny. You know, there, there's so many details here we, we can point out. I'm aligned with Susan on two of the biggest dynamics that are occurring here. Number one, this dance of proximity that's that's called proxemics. You know, there, there's these four zones and 18 inches is that intimate zone and the, the widest zone is the public zone, anything over 12 feet. What's interesting is when you feel stress or anxiety, the perception of, of proximity is four times different. So she might be 20 feet away from him, but she feels like she's five feet away. Hence, you see a lot of these nonverbal cues that might be tells for some additional uncertainty and stress and anxiety. The other piece with, with Robert here is in his levels of, comp of, of comfort and confidence, it's what we call the upside down triangle. You see where his feet are closer together and he's got his right arm over the truck and his, his left hand here is, is more active. This upside down triangle is what you might think of like a top. You can spin a top and in those tops you can easily push over. In human behavior, when you have a stance that's like a top, that's communicating that you've got a high level of vulnerability and you're okay with it. Hence, he has no concern that she may take this alleged action to put this hit out to kill him, nor would he even have his back to her. His back, if he had so much distrust that something this significant might be coming, there's no way he would be staying in this upside down triangle, nor would he have his back to her. What incredible insight tonight from everyone. I'm so glad uh, you all were able to join us. Rob Best, Susan Constantine, Dr. Robbie Ludwig, and Dr. Judy Ho. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you again really, really soon.